Hi there. In this lecture, we see the classic form pawn installation at some point. So this is an absolutely fascinating game from an installation perspective. D4 from alpha zero, we have knight f6. C4, E6, knight C3, bishop B4. So Nimzo Indian is tolerated on this occasion. So usually, quite often, knight f3 is played to avoid the Nimzo Indian. So this is an interesting change. Bishop b4 is played. We have the Rubenstein variation. So Alpha Zero, a fan of the Rubenstein variation with e3, a very solid, reliable system against the Nimza Indian. So Stockfish castles. We have Bishop d3, c5, Knight g e2, c takes d4, e takes d4, d5. We have c takes d5, Knight takes d5, a3. And now knight takes c3. This does strengthen white's center a little bit. And we have knight g3 now being played. Queen c7. And it looks as though doesn't white have to protect c3? Guess what alpha zero plays here, which is fascinating. 400 points. Yeah, just casually casting. <laughs> so. The c3 pawn isn't actually taken. Knight d7 is played. If queen takes c3, this is quite magical. Guess what white plays here? Which is winning, actually. This is actually a winning position for white. We have knight e4. And you might think, what on earth is going on here? If queen takes a1, can you see the points? 100 points. There's not too many defenders around the king. We can actually play knight f6 check. And if g takes, we have queen g4 check. And this is very quick, queen h4. So we're simultaneously protecting d4. And looking at f6 and looking at h7, the mate threat, queen h7. If f5, queen f6 check. And here, bishop h6. And how does black defend g7 now? Yeah, black's a goner. Black would have to give up material just to stay on the board for a bit longer. Okay, f6, but the damage is done. We've, we've won so much material. Let's look at that again. If queen takes d4, guess what we play here? It, on this occasion, we can play bishop e3, safeguarding the rook. So the queen moves again, and now we just play knight takes d6. So queen takes, we have bishop takes h7 check, winning the queen. So it's a poison pawn, basically. This is a poison pawn, whatever way we're looking at it. Look at it. If we look at it again and just say uh, king h8 instead. We have queen h5, h6, bishop takes h6, and this is crushing. We're hitting the queen as well. So say g6, we can play bishop takes g6. And... Yeah, the, the the king's had it here. You know, this position, bishop takes f8, is checkmate. The king's really uh, just been torn to shreds here in these lines. If f takes, queen takes, how is the mate threat parried on g7? If rook f7, you know, we have queen g8. So yeah, fascinating. Queen takes c3 is a no-go area. So knight d7, we have rook e1. Now here, if queen takes c3, there's a key move for white to have the advantage here. Can you guess what it is? It's actually bishop g5. So it's dissuading knight f6. We can you know, have the option of chopping off. We're protecting the rook. If queen takes d4, we're going to take on h7 and then win the queen. Thanks very much. But the critical path here for an advantage is very different, actually, to before. We don't use knight e4 of king h8 guess what we can use here with a big advantage for the attack we can actually use that e4 as a real pivot point advantage here for attacking purposes we can play rook e4 here so with the idea of pivoting to h4 very direct attack potential because there's no defensive knight on f6 and h4 is important here as well to weaken black's king a bit further so this position is very critical for black and the rook nicely holds d4 this is just a very strong attack 
so let's say here f takes we can play rook c1 and here bang rook takes h7 okay we've neglected d4 it doesn't matter about d4 because anytime king takes there's bishop takes g6 winning the queen that's check winning the queen queen takes d4 next so let's say instead king takes then we have queen h5 check queen takes g6 and, and mating so yeah it seems as though queen takes c3 is instructive from the attacking perspective how bishop g5 with this pivot in mind it's all based on you know no defender really on on f6 this this soft spot is being targeted through great pivot movements really really fantastic behind the scenes here so anyway <laughs> b6 is played now bishop g5 is played here so there's still an interest in attacking potential we have bishop f4 trying to defuse things if queen takes c3 the problem is queen f3 here so looking at a8 and also threatening bishop takes h7 with queen takes c3 so this situation is just winning for white we're picking up c3 so bishop f4 bishop takes f4 queen takes f4 knight h5 queen h6 and now a pivot here rook e3 yeah this is an attacking rook potentially so we have g6 and now queen f3 looks at the rook on a8 the rook moves so yes if queen takes h5 we are going to take the rook on a8 there's no problem here that's the advantage for us so rook b8 we have knight f6 check so black has been weakened on the dark squares we have bishop b7 and now h4 now this is absolutely vivid vivid here what white does white basically goes to install a form pawn believe it or not on h6 and these kind of installations really convince me this isn't simply accumulation of advantages this is accumulation of installations so we have queen f8 and it's quite vivid rook h3 and believe it or not you know if you're like five years old you try and install a form pawn without really sort of maybe understanding why it would be effective so there's actually a form pawn plan and you might think hold on this diagonal must be weak right so surely this isn't even possible so rook h5 stops h5 that's kicked out of the way and this is usually fatal when players play like this it's usually fatal for their own king but here with the rook on h3 the bishop defends g2 so case in particular case in point here we're not being mated and the form pawn is installed now what this means is as well as a restricted king it means h7 is underlined as a target sometimes on this diagonal there are real benefits here so let's see game on rookie eight c4 f6 queen d3 and now e5 automatically giving instantly giving black um, black makes a compromise to give a pass pawn to white and yes okay it's blockadable but why this concession if queen c7 we can probe e6 actually and here we can get out of the way believe it or not well <laughs> for this maneuver we can play this maneuver in particular which is really dangerous for black so this situation bishop f5 and then we you know we're going to be winning material so that's really dangerous to allow that e6 pawn to be targeted so it's moved out of the way d5 so we've got technically a pass pawn but you might think well it's blockadable isn't it queen d7 if queen d6 bishop g2 this situation we have bishop e4 and we're improving things gradually in this situation it's still work to do but we've, we have a dominating looking position where black's really tied down to things so let's go with the game path though so queen d7 bishop g2 rook c8 rook g3 rook c5 so bishop e4 so it's similar to the game path anyway so how does white actually concretely make any progress here now there's some high level shuffling here 
So black does seem to be very comfortably blockading the past pawn. Is that installation worth anything, the past pawn? Okay, so there's pressure on c4 a bit, which needs to be handled as well. Now we're getting it, we're brewing a situation with this high level shuffling where something is going on. And let's see. So at the moment, probing. There's a little trick here. If rook takes f6, there's bishop takes d5 check, winning the rook. So we can't take on f6. Let's put that on the board. Check, and that rook will be lost. So that's not really uh, attacked. So queen b1, king h3 protecting g4 with the king. And now queen b4, things are getting a little bit uncomfortable all of a sudden for black. Or are they? Bishop f5, rook a d3, bishop f7, rook d2, king j, and now rook c3. Well, the blockade hasn't been set up. The actual blockade squares are unavailable now. But does it mean that pushing the pawn is, is actually dangerous? Well, yes, d6 is played here. So progress is being made now. And the exchange is offered. So why on earth is the exchange offered? So this is one of the big maybe mysteries that people didn't really highlight this game. Because there's actually a fantastic pass pawn here, which gives phenomenal unblockading possibilities you wouldn't dream of. With this pass pawn and the form pawn, what do you think would be a good unblockade resource here? to lift the queen's blockade so we can push through with d8 how would you do that in fact is there any way to dream up how to do that let me show you this amazing variation king h8 which means that bishop g8 is possible if we gang up on h7 with a bit more pressure with say queen b1 but also black can counter attack as well on a a the a pawn now we have this remarkable c5 here and actually there are various unblockades actually imagine the queen on b8 or a queen on a8 the point is any capture they'd be d8 and that would be big trouble for black so just to put it on the board here b takes bang ouch what an unblockade so d8 check and you know this position is is very dangerous because we can gang up on the g8 bishop you know rook b3 rook b8 very very dangerous so black actually plays rook takes c5 like this we have rook takes c5 and again not allowing queen b8 as a possibility we have rook takes c5 but now we go with queen e4 <laughs> and we've got the threat of queen a8 it's a ridiculous threat we've got that queen a8 threat so bishop g8 just to try and parry that threat let's put it on the board for fun a5 queen a8 is winning here because we have bishop e6 and then off the check yeah black's gonna be mated so let's imagine bishop g8 Rook d6 though, and here we can get a lot of pressure with rook c6, and then we're going to play for queen c8, you know, as an unblockade resource. So it's fascinating stuff. So the exchange was mysteriously <laughs> given up, but yeah, these possibilities are absolutely amazing with the past pawn. So the exchange was given up, maybe not so mysterious now. A5. So White's trying to play for c5 if rook takes, for example. It's, it's very dangerous. We have bishop e6. We're the exchange up now. Black's crumbling. We have f3 defending g4. And this is the end of the game here. And yeah, it was, it was harmless to take on g4 there as well. 
it's it's still winning whatever but f3 the operators resigned if queen b7 king g3 we can actually start taking out b6 as the next operation queen takes b6 so taking out c6 so yeah white's got a huge advantage here the exchange up so absolutely fascinating behind the scenes how stockfish just gave up it seems the exchange for, for not too much with rook cd7 yeah there's a lot of mystery behind the scenes of this particular game yeah i hope you enjoyed it as much as me but we do get this kind of pattern of installation continuous you know, accumulating installations which get really super dangerous for the opponent until they have to give up material and it's like too late the damage is done okay i hope you enjoyed it panel instructive <laughs> thanks very much all comments questions likes and subscribes really appreciated thanks so much